Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Frequent viewers of this show know me as an enjoyer of ancient rack gear and tacky old groove boxes. And although I do have a fable for the industrial flair of modern electrons and the swamp gas glow of Roland's IRA range, the design over matter attitude of teenage engineering never really clicked with me. Today we are going to talk about the OPZ. This protein bar shaped multimedia a groove box was released around the same time Teenage Engineering put production of the multiverse melting OP1 on hold. They basically removed all components, still remotely resembling real audio gear, set a new benchmark for ultra radical miniaturization, and in defiance of God and man and all things holy, made the screen option an iOS exclusive. I'm surprised Roland didn't think of that first. At the first glance, the OPZ is ticking all the boxes. A multi timbral sound module trapped inside an alternate reality Star Trek TV remote control made out of injection molded plastic covered with tiny buttons and LEGO Technic compatible encoders. In contrast to its iconic sibling, the OPZ comes with an actual multi-track sequencer triggering four technically identical sample based drum tracks and tracks with a focus on more melodic stuff. These four instruments are dedicated to monophonic basses, polyphonic leads, arpeggios, and chords with up to four notes but are basically based on the same 11 synth engines and a chromatic sample player. Rather unorthodox flavors like bow, cluster, your anus, and more conventional sound generators like saw, reminiscent of the OP-1 and can be tweaked with two parameters and a resonant filter each. The latter is low pass before noon and high pass after lunch. There is only one ADSR envelope for amplitude, but the LFO can be routed to synth parameters synced and used as an auxiliary envelope. Teenage Engineering also included two cent FX. And a master FX section with chorus, drive, and filter. Tape allows for beat repeat FX and quite similar to the tiny pocket operator's punch in FX can be used to sweeten your live performance. Gyroscope will turn your expressionist dance moves into modulations. The esoteric sequencer gimmicks plus virtual tape approach of the OP-1 didn't really tickle my fancy, so the more traditional sequencer of the OPZ is much appreciated. Sure, maximum pattern length is 16 steps, but you can work around this limitation by changing step length, chaining patterns or going down the step components rabbit hole, which lets you enter step repeat. Sweeps and sub steps. 
up to 16 patterns, including all other parameters, can be organized in 10 projects. This is quite an impressive set of features and although the OPZ can be operated as a standalone unit, syncing it to the iOS app via Bluetooth makes life a lot easier. I was able to run the app on a Mac Mini, but I'm not aware of any solutions for Windows or Android. In its original state, the OPZ is capable of sampling from the internal microphone, a headset microphone or loading samples via USB. You can add upgrades like a line module, an N64 style rumble pack or fair trade narcotics interfacing option. This specific unit is pimped with the OpLab module, which adds MIDI and CV connectivity. Speaking of connectivity, the USB-C port allows for communication with a computer and turns the OPZ into a MIDI host. It doesn't provide a lot of juice though and you will have to factor in a few adapter cables. Oh, and then there's the operatic section. Controlling a light rig right out of the sequencer using a DMX interface, instant visuals made out of stills and videos using Photomatic and Unity engine based video animations. Are you bored yet? Are you still here? Mute groups, preset randomization, the second most useless pitch band device I've come across yet. <laughs> Walker grade internal speaker, this one is slightly bent, super panic, like my life. automated analysis of chord structure, rechargeable battery, millions of button combinations, the device is around one million dollars cheaper than the OP1 which still amounts to one hundred billion dollars. And thanks to synth repair wizard Thomas not only for currently resurrecting a few 90s synths for future episodes but also for lending me his OP. The OPZ most probably holds the world record for features per square inch. Will Teenage Engineering win me over this time? You have already heard the OPZ in today's intro tune. Nothing wrong with that. I wanna know what watching 10 minutes of Red Means recording in a cuckoo live set can teach me about the OPZ. <laughs> easier than expected. Admittedly, I'm still a rookie when it comes to maneuvering around the 16-step limitation, but the Punch FX and Electron-style step components functionality are a powerful set of tools. My sound design was a bit generic in this one. Let's add some external gear and an iOS device for better control of the sound engine. screen makes things a lot easier and integrating other synths with the OpLab option works like a charm. I was struggling with double triggers of the buttons and there were issues with the Bluetooth connection, nothing I would want to experience on stage. Teenage Engineering put a strong focus on live performance. Time to put the OPZ to the test as a studio instrument in this decaf no foam half sweet iced skinny venti 10 pumps vanilla extra whip Cyberdyne Systems cafeteria back ground music. I still don't know what to think of the OPZ. 
No doubt having a compact yet complete music production environment with a powerful sequencer, great sound generators, multimedia features and a design that won't get you searched at airports is a dream come true. Still, the bring your own screen and insert coin for MIDI and CV policy paired with build quality issues on a comparably expensive device will be a deal breaker for many and the microscopic controls can be frustrating unless you go full on black belt on the UI. Maybe I'm a bit too old school for the OPZ in its current state, but I would totally get a less toyish instrument boasting all its awesome features. Unfortunately, it seems like teenage engineering is too busy rebranding actual children's toys. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.